You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Good morning. Happy Saturday, everybody. It is not Wednesday, as you may have noticed. It is Saturday, which means it's time once again for our third special edition Saturday morning episode. And this week's episode is with one of my favorite comedians and a good friend of mine, Mr. Lamont Price. You may remember from our summer special edition last month. He may be the only person on earth who likes Saturday morning cartoons more than I do. So sit back, grab a bowl of Lucky Charms, and listen to this week's special edition episode of TV Guidance Counselor with Lamont Price. I'm well, I'm well. How so, are you? It's Saturday. I'm doing very well. It's, uh, it's Saturday morning. We've gotten up. We're watching cartoons. So getting how can you cereal, go Getting out yeah. cereal. Getting out cereal. Yeah. Captain Crunch. You're a Captain Crunch guy? Crunch Berries. Do you still do Captain Crunch cereal? Uh, I haven't bought Captain Crunch in a while, but I would. Have you ever had the Captain Crunch, like, uh, rest? Like, people will always try and make Captain Crunch recipes. Like, they'll do Captain Crunch fried chicken. I don't believe in any outside Captain Crunch adventures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could never get into Captain Crunch as a kid growing up for some reason. It was it was just too sweet for me. What was your cereal? My cereal was Corn Pops. See, again, you're like a 30-year-old, 10-year-old. Yeah. That's a very... Ad- Actually, no. Corn Pops is pretty no, sweet. No, Pops was a, was a sweet... Was yeah. a, it was like, the, I gotta have my Pops. Yeah. That I always that. like the one that goes, gotta get pops, yeah, gotta get pops. pops. Yeah. That was that weight, that beat. I didn't eat those, but like, so I did Captain Crunch. That was my, yeah. that was, but I would Cut also up your do. your mouth, man. Yeah, but listen, only the, yeah. only the strong. Fair enough. Uh, I would do Cookie Crisp. Okay, yeah. I would do that. I would do did fruit, you ever have, Fruity Pebbles. Did you ever have any of the Cookie Crisp ripoffs, like ice cream cones? No, remember but those? I remember those, yeah. but I didn't have those. Like, I didn't do Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I didn't oh, do... Oh, I love Cinnamon uh, Toast Crunch. Yeah, I was like a Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Honey Nut Cheerios, Corn Pops guy, like real simple. Real simple. I had a cousin, an older cousin, that would eat uh, 100% natural. Oh, no. And that was the first adult cereal I tried to My first eat. adult cereal was Basic Four. Love it. I don't even remember. And Raisin Nut Brand. Raisin, I remember I remember uh, Raisin Nut yeah. Brand. Uh, and then there was one time I tried to be super adult, and I begged my mother to get me... Not Grape Nuts. Uh, yes. Oh, grape the nuts. worst. The because, worst. Because... The ads. I love grapes. Yep. And I love nuts. It's nothing like either. And it's nothing. No. That was the most deceptive campaign yeah. for a kid... It's like sour road grit. Basically. Yeah. It's like you put it together and you get windowsill chips. Yeah. My neighbors growing up, so when I was in elementary school, I would, in hindsight, this is crazy, but I would walk to school by myself as a four or five year old, but I would walk and meet my other neighbors who were in the class with me and we'd all walk down as a group, but my house was the furthest down the street, so I would always be first. Right. And I got up very early. I, I almost never slept as a kid. I slept about two hours a night until I was about 22. So I would be up at like four or five in the morning. So I would walk to this kid. Charlie's house because he was the, the next one down and his parents would be getting ready for work his dad would be sitting at the table and I remember he would always eat grape nuts with water instead of milk mm. and I would sit there and I would read the paper while this kid was getting ready for school I'd sit at their breakfast table and read the paper and watch the news with their dad because no one was up in my house my dad went to work at 4 in the morning and my mother didn't get up I would make her coffee so I'd put her coffee on and she'd get up and have it it's after making coffee yeah I'd make her coffee so I wouldn't even see her she'd, she'd get up and have her coffee after I left and I'd go and read the paper at this people's house while he's eating grape nuts which in hindsight is mental can you imagine a 4 or 5 year old coming over your house and sitting down just grabbing the paper Would you, did you have it like full on oh yeah the brown open shoot, with the oh, yeah. covering your head like you're the dad yeah, but I would grab the comic section or the entertainment section to do that and be like, oh, oh interesting, yeah. Got yeah. like uh, Charlie Brown on the outside. What's Robot Man doing today? Robot or Robot Man, underrated yeah, comic strip, absolutely. underrated comic strip. Absolutely. Robot Man's gone, I think, and his place is the ro- his buddy. Yeah. Mo- Mo- Monty? Yeah, Monty. Yeah, Monty, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, so that's what I would do, but that's so, he would always eat grape nuts, so I was like, yeah, those look pretty good. They're so good, he doesn't even need milk. He's using them with water, and one time I, my dad did buy them, and they were expensive. They came in a little box. And 
he That's complained. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, very it was like post, eight, right? Eight, yeah, it post. post. It was like six ninety nine or something for this little box, and uh, we had that box of grape nuts for like eight years. No one, no one would eat it. It was the worst. I did something crazy with grape nuts. I got a box. I, I was like, okay, I want to make myself a bowl of grape nuts. I'm yeah. gonna be super adult about it. And for some reason, I decided to eat my grape nuts hot while I took a bath. Oh, while you took a bath? I got in the bathtub. That is with indulgent. A bowl of grape nuts. How old were you? Nine, maybe. Yeah, ten. that is living the life. Yeah, and I was like, this is what adults would do. Sit in the bath with yeah, your grape nuts. That was the first bowl of grape nuts. That I ever had. I got the grape nuts. I'm gonna be all mature. Did you just power through them? Or were you like, uh, I think halfway through, I realized this was a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of limped out of the tub. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, I like that. I like the idea of eating cereal in the bath. In though. the tub. Just you should revisit chilling. that. Have you revisited that? And Never. You need to. No, I don't think it's Lucky Charms. Uh, uh-uh. I'm not a marshmallow guy. You don't like I def- marshmallows. I hate marshmallows, and I definitely don't like fake marshmallows. Yeah. So on Amazon, you can buy bags of just Lucky Charms marshmallows, ugh. and and they sell well, but uh, and they're not that much either because you know they're mostly styrofoam or whatever yeah, they are. I, I, marshmallow s'mores. Ugh. You don't like s'mores? I don't like marshmallows, man. Oh my god, no peeps. No, no. Wow. Well, Anything I with feel, marshmallows, I feel I, sad for you. Fluff. Mm-mm. Oh, you're not a fluff nutter. You're not a true New Englander. Marshmallows, dude. Do you like peanut butter? I like peanut butter. You can't do fluff. Got to be chunky though. Yeah. Skippy. Oh, you gotta do the chunky. I'm a Skippy guy. I'm a, we wow. were a Skippy family. We didn't wow. trust Jif family. What about Peter Pan? We didn't trust Superman. We were Skippy. You're Skippy. Skippy. See, I had no brand loyalty. I still don't because my dad, who's very much like military, right? Uh, he actually he started a cleaning company called Mill Spec for military specifications for a while and he was like as a part time job and he's your dad like, was a secret agent he's man. like we'll come into your house and we'll clean it to military specifications and he had business cards and everything. <laughs> you know your dad was a secret agent right he very well you don't, I don't think you he realize that well your dad man. was a secret agent my uncle was special forces uh, but so my dad he would have a budget for food shopping every week it was like you know whatever it was $60, $100 whatever the budget was and he had to spend that budget it was like he acted like it was a federal budget. Like if he didn't spend it, you wouldn't get he it. He would the lose next it. Year. Yeah. So he had his list of stuff. He'd go down, up and down every aisle, and once he got the list of stuff, say he had a hundred dollar budget and he only spent sixty bucks, he's like, I got this other forty dollars. So then he would just buy whatever was on sale. So we got whatever. If it was Skippy peanut butter, if it was Teddy peanut butter, it was on sale. I love Teddy peanut butter, which is local to Boston, because we used to get uh, Wick. When I was growing I remember, up. I remember that. Which is women, infant, and children. I yep. don't know if it's local to Massachusetts. It might be federal program, but it's basically... It's we basically got that. Free government I, I remember getting that, yeah. Yeah. And they would give us these paint buckets of Teddy peanut butter. <laughs> like, just huge... I remember those ...gallon buckets. tubs. We had so many of those, because we'd keep them and use them for, like, toys or blocks or whatever. But we had tons and tons of these Teddy bear peanut butter. But, so yeah, we would get whatever product they were pushing that week that was on sale. We'd get whatever the hip cereal was, like, strawberry shortcake cereal, whatever, because it was on sale. Like, what, the... the, the the designer yeah. cereals. Yeah, whatever it was. It was always Ralston and it was always bad because my dad would just had to spend his budget. So I had no brand loyalty whatsoever. But I got exposed to much. So you, like me, were uh, a fan of excess. Yes, absolutely. Things I still am. Yes. I still yes. am. We uh, we had pizza before this podcast. There's four of us here. I ordered four pizzas. Yes. In and a calzone. And a calzone. <laughs> in hindsight, a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. 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 I that's, understand. That's how I do it. I understand your mind. I've eaten pizza in the bathtub. You know what I hate about being an adult? I'm semi-tall. I mean, you're taller than me. What are you, 6'5"? Mm-hmm. I'm 6'1". Six six you're 6'1"? Six yeah. You're taller. I thought you were taller than I am. How tall are you? 6'3". No, I'm not taller. Maybe I'm taller than you. You no. seem taller than me. But I can't I can't take a bath anymore. There's no baths that are comfortably. Like, your knees stick out. Right. It's not. I'm a shower guy. I've been a yeah. shower guy for years. Oh, I love showers. I wouldn't take a bath to get clean. I'd take a bath just to take a bath. I used to take, when I was a kid, I would take so many baths, my mom would be like, Lamont, listen. Because I'd be in the bathtub for a it's great. long time. Yeah, yeah. Would you Until I got all pruny and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? My mom would be like, Lamont. Because my mom had a hard time policing that because yeah. she didn't want to discourage baths. Yeah, baths are good. But she also was like, listen, I need to get in the bathroom. Yeah, like, what's she going to do? Be like, you're reading too many books. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a good... Yeah, I would fall asleep in the shower a lot. 
because I, I had a I had a weird um, I don't know if it was neurological or what, but I had a weird thing where I didn't sleep more than two hours a night for for decades. So sometimes I would just fall asleep, and I would in the morning. This was more of a middle school thing. I would get up at like five five thirty. I would get in the shower, especially in the winter where it was so cold and the shower was all nice and warm. And I'd wake up just curled up in a ball on the floor of the shower. Like I would have just been like, ooh, it's so nice, waterbed. Uh, and I would I would have been asleep for like an hour. I don't know how I didn't drown. I'd fall asleep in a tub. Yeah. I don't know how it ended up. I, I, I'd always do it. I'd take a nap. I would plan my naps in the tub. Didn't you see Nightmare on Elm Street? Yep. And that didn't teach you the nope. lesson of not sleeping in the tub? I wasn't scared of that, dude. Yeah. I was less scared of him than I was Jason. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. You could you could. Reason. I felt like I could take Freddy Krueger. Well, you could, I feel like you could reason with him. Yeah. He's talking to him. Yeah, he talks. Got a lot Jason's of personality. Silent. Yeah, exactly. Jason's just coming. So it's Saturday morning. You picked September 23rd, 1989. Yes. You're 10 years old? Uh, yes. Okay. So this was prime cartoon watching time for you. Now, now and I, September specifically because I loved the, I loved when networks would take all sort of the kids from each sitcom and yeah. put them on a preview show. A prime time preview it was, show. It, that was prime program. Appointment television. Yes. That was a big deal. That was the presidential ad- address. That was... State of the Union, yeah. you had to watch. Oh, the kids from Full House and Family Matters are getting together to promote the Saturday morning. Yeah. You had to watch it. And the other thing was, it would always be the Friday before the cartoons premiered. Yes. So Friday night, and the crazy thing, in hindsight, this is nuts, that was the first time you'd hear what the cartoons were going to be. Yep. The night before they premiered. You would have no idea what they were going to be until the night before. So you're waiting all summer. And it was a good thing to look forward to because the summer ended. You're bummed out. And you have this to look forward to, the new cartoon. That was the kids' version of the NFL draft. Okay. I would argue it's way better than the NFL draft. Well, what I'm saying is for kids, that was it. That was the most important thing I would, and I don't have any statistics to back this up, but I would imagine every single kid in America watched those. They <laughs> there was no kid that didn't watch it. They had. They would to. let kids out of juvenile hall. <laughs> there were kids in comas that they'd give them a shot just of, sh- of uh, some kind of adrenaline. So wake them up for that thirty yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. So yeah, September. You're excited for the new shows, but you're getting up early. You're getting up at five a.m. Now the TV guide I was pouring through. This was Chicago TV. Well, the Chicago TV guide, yeah. so it was a little off from what I. Being from Boston, right, and I'd wake up early, and if I missed these two shows, I'd be pissed. The first one being at five a.m. I mean, my my Saturday morning started early. Yeah, mine did too. Captain Bob. Yep. Okay, at five a.m. WCVB. I never even attempted to draw or paint what he was painting no. or draw what he was drawing. I never tried. Yeah. I was uh, captivated by the theme song. Yep. I was captivated by that shot of the boat yep. on the dock and the bloop, 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 that whole thing. Yeah. And he, and, you know, he's he had a soft, yep. For people, a soft voice. Not from Boston Arab, Captain Bob was a 60s and 70s produced local show produced by our ABC affiliate, uh, WCVB TV5. And it was an old man, sea captain, Teaching you how to draw pictures of animals. The kind of show that they would never allow kids to watch never, today. Never, never. He was probably 65 years old, and he would use uh, cray paws. I remember it was always cray paws and charcoals, and he would draw like a rainbow trout or something. And it was amazing. Oh, it was very, very good. I used to follow along. I used to draw along with it. And then I would send my drawings in, which was ridiculous because the show hadn't been made for about 20 years. There must have been some guy at that station just throwing away children's drawings. <laughs> Got another goddamn rainbow trout. I guess it's a tiger. I don't know. Yeah, Jesus so that would Christ. Be, so that was on at five, and I definitely watched that as well. Absolutely. I would sit there. Sometimes I would get up before five o'clock, and I would sit there and watch the friggin' test pattern with a like just looking at the clock, waiting for the TV to come on. That was also yeah. a thing, a huge thing. So I always watched that. There was a show called The Magic, not The Magic School Bus, The Story Mobile. Which was about a bookmobile. It was also local. I, I think I remember that. that. I'd have to see clips of it, though. Weirdly, watched this show. This was strange because I was not a sports fan. There was a '70s show called The Baseball Bunch. That oh, the San Diego. Chicken. That was and, and uh, the 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 catcher there. Uh, for the, not Yogi Berra. 
Oh, Johnny Bench. Bench. Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember that. I yeah. remember that show. I watched it every week. I had no interest in baseball. Watched it all the time. I, at the time, I didn't care I about baseball, like but I, wa- I always watched it. Does this still have yeah. San Diego Chicken? Is that still I a think thing? it's still around, right? I think I so. I have no idea. I wouldn't know. And uh, I watched that, and then I watched what you watched at 530. Jabberwocky. Jabberwocky. Never miss Jabberwocky. One of my all-time favorite theme songs. Yeah. Doom, da, doom, da, doom, da, doom, the brothers and sisters. do 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 I loved it. Maybe the most 70s show I can think of. Oh, yeah. Afros, yeah. Uh, T's, everything. Again, another local production produced by Channel 5. Uh, the main woman in it was Jill Beth Williams from Poltergeist. Uh, it was the first thing she did. And it was a show where it was one of those things where you have puppets and kids and, and a couple of like young people living in like a clubhouse and teaching you about things. It was that one main puppet Jeff named Milwaukee. Dirty Frank. Oh, Dirty Frank, yes. Dirty Frank. Who was gross yeah. and had a very pedophile kind of yeah. way vibe. about him. Bad vibe. And another show or another character that would not be allowed on television. Absolutely today. not. Kids today are pussies. Yeah, you couldn't have Dirty Frank on you there. You could not have a dude Ooh. named Dirty Frank. Yeah. And he'd make all kinds of sounds. Yeah. And if he like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Do it. Dude. Yeah. Oh, Dirty Frank was the best. And the Jabberwocky itself was pretty gross. It looked like an old moth-eaten rug sample with a big, <laughs> huge nose. And he was all like, he was kind of like Wolfman Jack, if I remember. He was all like, yeah, beeping and bopping. Like, he was kind of like a weird 60s. He was a bit like Captain Caveman. Uh, was a a little bit, yeah. yeah. So I'm definitely in for those. 6 a.m., what are you going with? All right, now, here's, a, here's where I had to really think about it because, again, that TV guide. It's an hour I, I know it kept it local at that time, and I think there was a cartoon, uh, and it's not listed in here, so I, I would assume it was local to us, or I don't think it was made local, but I think we just had it. Right. It's called the Baba Papas. I don't know Baba Papas. You Baba Papas me. was like a family of... Gelatinous, they're like oh, like schmooze. They they can form into things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would they would weird shape. They they come. They kind of they were kind of shaped like uh, bowling pins. Yeah, and like then the they things could, from the they could form it. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much like those guys. <laughs> yeah, glip and gleep yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Baba and Papas, I don't know. Yeah, if Baba people Papas. know about Baba Papas, you here's know. how obscure Baba Papas must be. I've tried to find episodes. On YouTube, right? Yeah. And I have found episodes on YouTube. Okay. But the problem is, none of them are in English. Okay. They're all in Spanish or French. So maybe you could you possibly have been watching it on the Spanish channel? There's no way. There's no TV twenty seven. There's no way, dude. There's no way. I, I am telling you, it was like WCVB. All right, I'll look into it. I don't know anything about Baba Papas. If people know about Baba Papas, please email me at kenandikenreed.com. I will pass it on to Lamar. That was a long time time before I smoked weed, so there was no way I thought I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would have been watching a show called Dr. Fad. I don't know if you remember this show. This was hosted by a guy who went by the name Dr. Fad. He was a Japanese guy. And it was a show about kids' inventions. And he was famous for having invented the Wacky Wall Walker. Which was a piece of plastic that looked... It, I think I... And it would come down. looked like a spider. Yes. A piece of rubber. It was often a... a and you to- throw it against yeah, the wall. And it would walk down the wall. Yes. It was, it was often a prize in Captain Crunch, actually. It was, a, it was a huge serial prize, the Wacky Wall Walkers. And he invented them. And for a short period of time, those things were huge. And so he had his own show called Dr. Fad. And the theme song was terrible. It just went, Dr. Fad! Dr. Fad, just over and over again. He had a sweater that had hundreds of wacky wall walkers all over it. He was very uncharismatic. And the premise of the show was that kids would go on with their inventions, and it was a competition with their inventions. And the announcer was a guy named Jim Fife, who later went on to be on an HBO series called Encyclopedia, which was very, very funny. Uh, But... I watched it every week. Kids Inventors. I wanted to be on it. I was always submitting inventions. There's clips of it on YouTube. Definitely check out Dr. Fad. It's very 1989. It's very, very fun. And kids are awful on TV. They're nervous. They can't speak. They're stammering and stuttering. They have terrible inventions. It's great. It's great. I'd have to check that out. Yeah, it was. I always associated with another show called Steam Pipe Alley that was hosted by Mario Cantone, and it was from WPIX in New York, and it was a kid's show that was Mario Cantone from Stone of Mass. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, very weird kid's show that it was Dr. Fad and Mario Cantone's uh, Steam Pipe Alley had a very similar visual aesthetic. <laughs> so 7 a, uh, 6.30, what are you going with? All right, now this is a weird time because, again, I could have very well been 
in the local mode. Right. But I just remembered Baba, Baba Papa's. Yeah. And uh, so that TV guy would help me here because I didn't really get into the network stuff until, say, 8 a.m. Yeah. So according to that... It tells me that Alf was on. Yeah. So this, and the Archies or something. So yeah. like I felt like I would have watched that. Yeah, these are reruns of the Alf cartoon, not Alf Tales, right. Alf the animated series, which took place on Melmac. On Melmac, yeah. yeah. Uh, Alf cartoon. Gordon not Shumway. Bad. Gordon Shumway. Yeah, I'm definitely watching Dr. Fad. There is a show on Nickelodeon which I've never heard of before, but I'm somewhat intrigued by called on the on at the same time as Dr. Fad, weirdly called Dr. Snuggles. Hmm. <laughs> now, I wonder. Creep. Is it some weird thing they made up? Or they made it up, of course. Or is it Snuggles from... The ads? The ad Snuggles, like he's doling out advice. Probably not. They're like, look, it's just like Dr. Ruth, but with Snuggles. But with ad. Snuggles. Yeah. I'd watch that. I don't think it was. That. I'd like to find out what Dr. Snuggles is. So we move on to 7 a.m., which in Chicago time is 8 a.m. This is when the networks kick on. Here okay. So... What I'm thinking immediately is so, so we're just gonna do, we're gonna go with it as it's eight a.m. Then yeah 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 okay be, all right because I had a lot of uh, I jumbled a lot you of things do up some math. Uh, eight a.m. more often than not, according to that. See, here's why I'm confused because I got thrown off by that time, and in Chicago, Captain and the Game Master would be on at eight a.m. Correct, but that's uh, a 9 a.m. show But that's here. a 9 a.m. show here. Yeah. So I would watch that, but Alf Tales was on. So let's just Alf stay Tales. with that. I'd watch Alf Tales. Yeah, so 7 a.m. Chicago times, 8 a.m. East Coast time. Right. You're going with Alf Tales. You're, you're continuing the Alf, Alf Tales. Alf Tales annoyed me. For some reason, I would get mad when they would mess with uh, fairy tales, and I love Fractured Fairy Tales on the uh, Underdog uh, show. Yes. Uh, and Underdog, I loved all the um, Jay Ward stuff, like Bullwinkle, and Bullwinkle. they would do, to me... Even as a kid, as nine, ten years old, Mr. that was Peabody. sort of Mr. Peabody. That was the definitive take on fairy tales. Abracadabra, change o range o ring. Exactly. If and I recite these words just right, what one would I be? Those shows are still really funny. They're great, and they're hilarious and so inventive and weird. And when I would see anyone else as a cartoon try to do a take on a fairy tale, I would just be like, bullshit. No. It's a, yeah, Fresh and Fairy Tales yeah. is great. That narrator, whoever he was, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Colonel McBrag. Commander McBrag. McBrag. Commander McBrag. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I was I was searching the South Seas. Yeah. Love Commander McBrag. I was surrounded by cobras. Yeah. Those shows. A lot of my sense of humor and timing and all that stuff I learned from those shows. I mean, they're, they're his sidekick, his butler was yeah. the was the gym. Oh, because he just oh, Commander, yeah. what did you do? Thinking quickly. Yeah. I turned my belt into a machine gun. Yes. Judging myself out of the situation and back home safely. Fantastic show. If that was a that was some story, Commander. Quite. Amazing show. I, if people Commander McBrag is amazing. Take two days off from work and just just, just watch all this. Just pour through Commander yeah. McBrag's. Yeah. They're hilarious. You know what? Check out Tennessee Tuxedo. Yes. Warriors. All all the stuff is great. Yeah. All uh, the stuff is great. Amazing. So. I understand that you would have watched Alf Tales. However, I'm going with a pup named Scooby Doo. See. Scooby Doo. Ah, uh, that's where I got confused because if you look at my list here, yeah, that was eight a.m. That's an eight a.m. Boston show, right? Yeah. So why don't we just go to eight a.m. Okay. Because I would have watched that. Pup named Scooby Doo. Pup named Scooby Doo. Yes. I know I was watching. It that. was a great show. Now I do not like the sort of babyfication of classic shows, and this was huge in the eighties. Yeah, I. That, but I was gonna say. I dug it for that reason. I like Flintstone Kids. Oh. Uh, Potato Head Kids? I didn't watch that one. Pink Panther and Sons? Uh, uh, I wasn't ever a big Pink Panther fan. Yeah. I, I mean, didn't care about a, a dude that didn't talk. Captain Caveman and Son? Uh, I like Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman! And Son. And Son. Yeah. I, <laughs> some reason I found it annoying. I hated Flintstone Kids. Love Muppet Babies. In fact, Muppet I, Babies is the best. I think I like Muppet Babies better than I like the Muppets. Uh, I'm gonna say I won't argue with yeah. that. Muppet uh, Babies is great. We'll get, but actually, that's coming. So, Pop Named Scooby Doo was amazing, and a lot of the people that worked on that show went on to create Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, Batman the Animated Series. Paul Dini worked on Pop Named Scooby Doo, I believe. Bruce Tim, all these people that worked on that show. And the great thing about that show was 
It was the first kids show I remember that sort of commented on the history of the show itself. Right. So they would sort of use the conventions and trappings of classic Scooby-Doo's to set your expectations and then flip them and then comment on the Like they were sort of setting themselves up. Yes, but in a loving, uh, winking way. And it was really smart. And funny in a fun show. And that show holds up. Those are out on DVD. Highly recommend people. I love that Freddy as a kid still had the ascot yes. going on. And he's obsessed with traps. He, and, yes. Yeah, yeah. My favorite, real quick though, my favorite Scooby Doo incarnation 13 is Ghosts. 13 Ghosts. Yes. Vincent Van Gogh. I felt like that was the best theme song. Oh, absolutely. And all that. And it was the only Scooby Doo until recently with the new series, which is actually very, very good. Okay. Um, the only Scooby Doo series that had actual supernatural elements to it. The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, they were hunting actual ghosts. Because in the wake of Ghostbusters, they had... And Thriller, actually. Right. Weirdly, which is why they got Vincent No Ghost. more people in sheets. Yeah, it was real ghosts. 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo is great. Vince, yeah, it's, I mean, it's my favorite. It's Vincent... You know, it's it's, Van, it's Vincent Price. You can't go wrong with Vincent Price in a cartoon. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so I'm definitely going with that. What are you going with at 7.30? 7.30, which is 8.30 in this. Yeah. Uh, Camp Candy. Loved Camp Candy. I never miss Camp Candy. Camp Candy was I amazing. loved Camp Candy. There was a really strange phenomenon where... I don't know how John Candy... I know he was big in that time. Yeah. But to give him a cartoon, it didn't seem... Here's the weird thing. There were at least three SCTV alum who had their own cartoon. Okay, John Candy. Yeah, with Camp Candy. R- was Rick Moranis? SCTV? Rick Moranis what was, was Gravedale High. Oh, he was that was him. Okay. Yep. And then uh, Martin Short had the completely mental. Ed Grimley. Ed Grimley. Ed Grimley was great. Amazing show. Ed Grimley was great. Almost like a lost season of SCTV. It had all the writers from SCTV, most of the cast. Joe Flaherty was playing Count Floyd on it in the live action segments. If you like SCTV and you haven't seen the completely mental misadventures of Ed Grimley, you are missing out on sort of a lost season An of SCTV. Amazing cartoon. Really car- good cartoon. Oh. So for some weird reason. Three cast members of SCTV had their own cartoons, two of which had their names in the title. Very, very strange. Rick Moranis in Gravedale High, Camp Candy. I love Camp Candy. Camp Candy was great. Probably the weakest of those three shows, but a good show. I don't, but like the premise though, like where did they come up with that? Was it like a movie he tried to pitch? I don't know. He never, the closest thing he had was The Great Outdoors. Or did they just throw like, hey, Want to put your voice on this? Yeah, I assume that was probably you know, and he just, name just recognition, like a paycheck. Yeah, probably. I mean, he voiced himself. Yeah, he was himself, right? Yeah, yeah. And Howie Mandel at Bobby's World. There was a lot of that. Bobby's World was great. Bobby's, Bobby's World, World was the best. Fox thing had a ever. very good Saturday morning block at like 92, 93. Yeah. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Thunder, the tick. Thunder, uh, terrible Thunder, Thunder Lizards. Thunder Lizards. Eat the, the tick, cat. Eat the cat. Yeah. Eat the cat. Yeah. Was should have come on at night. Yeah. It was oh, that adult. It show. should have been a nighttime show. Savage Steve Holland. Yes, that. uh... That cartoon is brilliant. Eat the Cat was brilliant. The Tick is as well. Yes, the, the Tick is very, very, good. very funny. The tick is very good. So what are we going with at 8 o'clock, a.k.a. 9 o'clock East Coast? Uh, all right. 8 o'clock, a.k.a. So then that brings us back to the Captain and Captain and the Game Master. Captain and the Game Master, which, you know, for a kid who uh, loved Nintendo video games, yeah. I mean... It's basically the Wizard of Oz for Nintendo. Yeah. I, I love that they... I love the fact... It was one of those cartoons that blew your mind as a kid because all the video games you loved were in one right, cartoon. Right, So you're just like, oh my god. It's, it's Simon Belmont. It's Simon, yeah, Castlevania. It's King oh, Hippo. Man. It's it's Mega Man. Kid Icarus. All these guys. Yeah, yeah, amazing show. Uh, even though at the time I recognized that it was just a huge commercial. I didn't recognize it at the time. I did, but I didn't care. Now thinking back on it, I know that all, all most cartoons were just yeah. commercials. But that one was a little... That was like, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I know people. People like prices yeah. under the. I know people have done this, and you can I think buy costumes. But I I would love to dress up like Captain and the Game Master for Halloween one year. I just I couldn't do it because I'm like it's it's just been done. And it was one of those sucked into the TV cartoons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which happened very frequently on cartoons. Apparently, sucked used, into a mirror, sucked into the TV. I used to think that uh, if I if I try hard, like when you get a. The toy paper, yeah, and, and sun, the Sunday morning paper. Yep. I used to think that if I cut just right the top of the paper, you could get in there. I could empty out oh, all nice. the toys. And then when you turn twenty-two, you realize that. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad theory. You know what I used to do all the time was. Uh, do you remember like Columbia House and BMG? They would have yep. those services where you could get CDs and stuff. Mm-hmm. But they also had ones where you could get videos. 
and they'd send you this sheet. It was basically a big sheet of stamps, right. and each stamp was a different movie. And you licked the back, and you stuck the movies you wanted to the sheet and sent it out. I would collect those from everyone that got them. They'd come in the paper, and then I would draw video stores, and I would line up all the movies on the shelves in the genres where they where I would lay out this video store. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have a lot of friends in one. No, listen. I understand that. Uh, early porn for me was my dad used to get those electronics magazines. Yeah. And when he was done with them, he was like, here, have them, you know. Popular yeah. science and stuff? Or like that? Like, like, like the stereo catalogs. equipment. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. That kind of stuff. Was he a big Was he a big stereo equipment guy? Yeah, he was. Was it Tinker? Huge. I mean, my Did dad he have was a soldering a, iron? I, I don't know. Ah. He was like a jazz, you know, so he always was like, listen to how this sounds on this. Gotcha, gotcha. And as a kid, I He's didn't, an audio file. Okay. Yeah. Like, I was only a kid in, like, in sixth grade. Who knew who Billy Holiday was right. just off the first note? But in hindsight, you probably appreciate that. I do. I, yeah. I'm a big jazz fan now. Yeah. So, you but know. But at the time, you're probably at like, the time, uh, I was like, yeah, it's Billy Holiday. Yeah. And James, and my friends would make fun of yeah. me. Like, yeah, how do you know? You're like, Dad, you can't know? you just be into third base? Seriously. Yeah. Oh, Prime Minister Pete Nice. Yeah. He's now a baseball historian. Really? Yep. Um. So, my dad would give me old, old electronics magazines yeah. that he was done with. And I remember one day I'm flipping through one of them and we we're about to go out. To like McDonald's or something, and uh, those those you could buy the videotapes. Yeah. they had that catalog there, and then I noticed that there was a that was like a, a repair tab yeah. that he didn't bother to rip. Yeah, and I ripped it open. All adult. And it was all adult. Yeah, and he didn't know he gave that to me, and it was like finding fucking how old were you? Plutonium, at the time. 11, maybe? See, most kids 10, had to 11. go dig in the woods for that kind of thing. Yeah, time. well, I mean, I had to dig in the woods for the real stuff. Yeah. But that Who was one was of my first... dumping that stuff in the woods? Teenagers? Yeah, of course. We had. I remember we had a, a huge wooded area between my house and the next house in my neighborhood. And in the middle of the woods, there was a big pit. Like, someone had dug a big hole, and they had dumped an old furnace in there, like a big round furnace that ended up being kind of like a bridge across this hole, and we'd run across this old furnace. But on the sides of the furnace was basically a moat of 70s porno magazines, <laughs> which is really weird. And kids would fall into them. Like, we would do, like, sort of, actually, before American Gladiators, we would have, like, jousting tournaments on this. This is so dangerous in hindsight. We would have jousting tournaments on top of a rusty old 1940s furnace, and you would fall into a pile of dirty, gross, <laughs> old porno magazines. Just covered in DNA. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could sell that show to a network now as a game show. I didn't have woods growing up, but I was lucky in that I had, like, my one of my uncles. Uh, when I was a kid, he was, like, still in his early 20s or something, yeah. and he lived with my grandmother. And his room was, like, the fun room. Right. He had, like, a drum set. He had video games in there. Like, it was the best place to be. So yeah. if I were over, if I was over there, He'd go out and he'd go, hey man, let's have at it. So he'd go through all so his I'd stuff. So I'd go through all the stuff. And he had a pile of sports magazines. And sports I'd, Illustrated? You know, sports Illustrated, Inside Sports, like all this stuff. Yeah. And I'd read, I'd go through all of them. And I think I might have been eight years old at this time. And uh, I get to the middle. Okay. And he doesn't understand how determined I was just to read his magazines. And it's all porno after Oh, that. he had him stuffed in the middle thinking he wouldn't get that far. Right. He, I mean, I don't think he even thought, like, he just, that's yeah. what keeps him, yeah. you know? And he doesn't think, like, if he even if he does read, he's right. not going to go through that no, no. magazine. You can't read that fast. Nope. I was flipping through them. And that was, that was a really huge experience for me because... It was real, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. I felt it. I mean, my dad my dad had a subscription to Playboy, right. which I knew about. And he kept them in my mother's uh, hope chest. But I never went through them because it, I was like, I don't care. Like, he would sit and read it on the couch, like, outwardly. And I remember, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I remember there was an, an article in a Playboy magazine about underground comics. In his underwear, he'd be in his underwear yeah. just reading No, Playboy. just reading it, sitting on the couch. Yeah, he'd open it up when it came in the news and he'd, in the mail and he'd read it. And so uh, there was an article that I kind of saw over his shoulder about underground comics and the new comics and an article about Frank Miller's Dark Knight and Watchmen because I saw I saw from across the room I recognized the covers of those comics. So I was maybe eight or nine, maybe, maybe early, younger than that, seven. Mm -hmm. So I went through like a week later through the hope chest looking for that issue to try and find the article about comic books 
And I'm like flipping, I'm like boobs, 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 boobs. And it took me so long. I finally found it. And I literally went through my dad's Playboys to read an article. That's fucking hilarious. That's pretty ridiculous. You got to do that on stage. Maybe I will actually do that. Yeah. It was a good article. Yeah, you should actually bring the hope test in. Yeah. And go through the Playboys. Yeah. It was a good article. I've since. From 89. Yeah. Brandy Brent. Who who was in here? I've since purchased that issue uh, and and have that article. There's actually some really great articles in there. And I also remember when I was looking through the magazines trying to find the comic book article, I found an article written by John Waters that was an interview with Little Richard. That's one of the best pieces of journalism I've ever read. It's like eight pages of this great, great article about Little Richard. And I read that, and I was a Little Richard fan for life. I knew of John Waters from Night Flight, and which is why I kind of stopped at the article. But it was such a good article. I, I reread it knowing my dad would be home soon, and I was like, oh, I hope I don't get caught before I finish rereading this article John Waters wrote about Little Richard in this Playboy. <laughs> I'm reading the articles, Dad. I really was. I really was. I honestly was reading you know, the articles. You'd probably be more mad at me for that than if I was looking at the boobs. You gotta, you gotta pass by these titties. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So where are we at here? We're at 9 a.m.? We are at 9 a.m. We were talking about Captain N and somehow got into porn. Oh, yeah. It happens. I'm surprised they haven't done an adult parody of Captain N, the Game Master. I feel like it'd be a big audience for that. And it was a, a, a sometimes I would I would watch Dino Riders if I okay. was like, but I, I was I, a little boring. I, but I wasn't yeah, I wasn't into it. I was yeah. just like I I, just I, I think that I I felt like that was a kid that didn't live up to his potential. Yeah. And I'm like I would watch just to see if they figured it out. It was like a boring sectors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, sectors. Yeah, exactly. So we're going with Captain and the Game Master. I think I would have gone with that as well. Your next pick. Alright, so now we're at eight thirty, which is nine thirty. And that would lead me to, uh, actually, no, are we at 9 a.m.? Where are we at? We're at 9.30. We're at, okay, East Coast time, 9.30. All right, so East Coast time, 9.30. Uh, Muppet Babies was on. And we were talking about that earlier. Big Muppet Babies fan. Yeah, it's a great show. One of the best theme songs of all time. Yep. The opening note. Is that chick just belting out that note? Yeah, I mean that they put love into theme songs back then. Oh yeah, but that show had a, that was just a really smart show. Yes. Yeah. Did they ever explain what happened to Skater? No, I so I I did talk about this on stage before. I didn't really understand the chronology. Right. And I didn't know Muppet Babies came after Muppets because they would air them in syndication at the same time. So I thought they all murdered Skeeter. I really thought wait a they minute. All they're Skeeter. saying that Muppet Babies came after Muppets. It, well, in real life, it did. In real life, it did. Yeah. But I'm just talking about... Right, but I'm saying... So obviously, they, created, they were babies. Yeah, they created her for the Muppet Babies. Right. Didn't, they never felt the need to explain what happened to her as an adult. So this should be some fan fiction I'm about sure what happened to her. She became a hooker. I'm sure they murdered her. Or uh, she was murdered. Yeah. Something along those lines. Scooter took her out. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, Muppet Babies would have gone with... But it's up against Pee Wee's Playhouse. See, th- this was a weird hour for me because it's up against Pee Wee's Playhouse and it's also up against Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters. See, once Slimer came, once they changed the name to Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters, I was out. Because he became all Michael Jackson? Yeah, well, the the earlier Real Ghostbusters episodes, J. Michael Straczynski was writing for that show, had some really scary episodes. Like it the was stuff, some very good episodes. Stuff with Sam Hain. Sam Hain, the Boogeyman. The Boogeyman. One of the really creepiest scary. episodes. Yeah. And it Fabers- was, Mrs. Fabersham. Yes. Very scary very well written, great voice cast. Holds up today, by the way. Absolutely does. And once they switched it over to Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters, they had a new animation company. The animation was cheaper. The voices got uh, recast, so Dave Coulier was doing voices. But what they did do is they did keep the regular style Ghostbusters, and they had a block for that yeah, cheesy Slimer it version, wasn't the same. which I hated with the yeah. with the pizza yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't the same. I, I couldn't watch it. I was always going with Pee-wee's Playhouse, even over Muppet Babies, and I'll tell you why. Muppet Babies was on at this point seven days a week. You right. could find That's Muppets. True. So every Weekdays. day before school, true. so I'd get my fix, and then Pee-wee was only on once a week, and I loved Pee-wee's that show. Pee-wee's Playhouse. That was one. Of, that was another one that we just were enthralled by. Like it's amazing. It was funny. I'm, Word was, of the day. Yeah. Uh, was it Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah. Larry Fishburne. Cowboy then? Curtis. Cowboy Curtis. Yeah. Great cast. Really funny. Weird. Uh, the aesthetic of that show was amazing. It adopted all of these uh, underground punk rock L.A. artists. 
uh, were doing the designs for that show, which was amazing. Rob Zombie worked on that show. It was his oh, first really? job. Yep. Okay. Uh, just pulling back from Ed Big Daddy Roth designs and then all the different styles of um, you know animation you'd have stop motion animation you'd have uh, cutouts and uh, there'd be cartoons and I, I love that show it was like Night Flight in a half hour for kids it was a show as a kid I was always fascinated by a show or a movie that when I watched it I felt like I was getting away with something yes and, and also TV's getting Playhouse sort of an education was, yeah yeah, yeah. And showing those old of iWorks cartoons from the 30s when the King of Cartoons would come in. Yep. Who was played by Blackula himself. Oh, that's who that was? Yes, it See, is. This is why you're my, my nostalgia hero. Because I would never even think about that stuff. Yeah, it's Blackula. He's the King of Cartoons, which is crazy. Uh, just a really fun I was Blackula show. last year for Halloween, everybody. Nice, nice. Uh, and Phil Hartman was on it. Yep. I mean, it was great. Great show. Uh, so at uh, 9 a.m. Chicago time, a.k.a. 10 a.m. East Coast time, what are you going with? Okay, so Peebles Playhouse was still on because yep. that was that hour block. Yep. But if we go to 1030, Garfield and Friends. Love Garfield and Friends. Garfield and Friends was yeah. great. CBS was my station. I was always an NBC cartoon fan in the 80s, but around 89, 90, CBS started to CBS had some good stuff. Them. I was, in the late 80s, I was partial to ABC but CBS definitely came on strong with See, some stuff. See, late 80s CBS got way too Disney for me. You had Gummy Bears. You mean ABC got way too uh, Disney? ABC, that's what I mean. Right. Yeah, you had Gummy Bears. You had the Wuzzles. You well, had... We're the Wuzzles! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Two yeah. times the fun! We're the Wuzzles! That the was when they had... The they had a million cartoons with animals that could combine with yeah. other animals. Yeah. There was the Wuzzles. There was the Popples. With Shirt Tails... Shirt Tails was animals. Shirt Tails was animals. Yep. Uh, they had all that stuff. Yep. The Littles. Littles. You never stopped the Littles. Never stopped the Littles. Littles don't stop. Who were like rat people. That was based on a series of books. They lived in a wall. Yeah. They were basically mouse people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't have gone with that. I, ABC, just something about it rubbed me the wrong way. CBS, you had Pee Wee. You had the Teen Wolf cartoon. Teen Galaxy Wolf. High. Come in out to start yeah. the night. Muppet Babies. Teen Wolf. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, so I'm going with that. What's your next pick? All right, so now we're at 11 a.m. Things are winding down. Uh, Bugs and Tweety Hour. I'm going with Beetlejuice. Okay. Now, Beetlejuice, I'll give you your, your Muppet Babies argument. Beetlejuice was on five days a week. It was, but here's the thing. It was a different series. They had a syndicated Kind of like Doug? Yes. Kind of like Doug. It was a syndicated five days a week version and then the Saturday morning version, which was slightly different. Okay. Also, the same thing, there was a Spider-Man cartoon and Spider-Man is Amazing Friends. Right. One was a weekday syndication. The Saturday morning was Amazing Friends, which I loved. And they were slightly Amazing different. Friends was, <coughs> Amazing Friends was great. Yeah. Who yeah, doesn't love Amazing Friends? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going with Beetlejuice. Your next pick. All right. Now, at 1130, uh, Say by the Bell. I would not go for Say by the Bell yet. I am tuning in to a show that was terrible, admittedly terrible. But I was a little bit obsessed with this show because of the aesthetic. So I loved the 80s sort of West Coastness of this show. And it's Rude Dog and the Dweebs. Rude Dog and the Dweebs. A cartoon I remember but never watched. It was based on a t-shirt. It was literally based on a t-shirt line. So in the late 80s, Rude Dog clothes were like TNC Surf. Which I wasn't just yes. t-shirt. But, uh, you know, and like bum equipment. And that sort of stuff. Rude Dog and the Dweebs was based on that. It, Did I watch that? It was great. It, it looked great, but it was really dumb. It was it was these dogs that, who was basically Spuds McKenzie. Right. Driving around on a convertible. It was not a good show, but I loved it. And I, I've since watched it and enjoyed it. And it was like a dog and his crew. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you like me with this. I'm a big fan of anything, whether it be a movie or a TV show, where it's like a gang. Top Cat. Top he, Cat's gang, Cliff. his crew. Yeah. I love a gang. Yeah. Yeah. Love Fair it. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. When anybody's crew gets together, like if it's a TV show, like King of Queens is an example. That yeah. show's pretty funny. You like it, the Poker Night episodes. I like any time when they're together, the guys yeah. are doing whatever they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the gang aspect of all that stuff. So do you feel like you didn't have that as a kid and you like doing it, you like watching it? Or no, in fact, I had, I had that as a kid. So that's why you like it. Yeah, it I definitely that had that as a yeah. kid and I always like that. Yeah. yeah. I Some of that, I like I always love the Cosby show when Cliff would have the Poker Buddies over. Yeah. Yeah, love that. Yeah, I love, no, the, I, I love I to like see guys, because that's when someone's, I think they're most honest when they're around 
many yeah, like. See, and you're seeing a, a different dynamic at the same time. So right. Like dealing differently. Dennis the Menace people. when he'd hang out with his yes with, with the other kids. What was that wee little kid he had that was a friend with the him? weird hair yeah, style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. I can't he was remember like the either. he was like his Millhouse. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't remember, remember his, his name, name though. So that's where I'm going with Rude Dog and Rude Dog and the Dweebs. This episode of Saved by the Bell is a jealous Zach uh, devises a sneaky plan to get rival Slater to move to Hawaii. He's jealous because of a girl. Oh, really? That never happened on no. Saved by the Bell. There was an episode of Saved by the Bell where the, a new girl came to school, as probably was every episode. Yeah. And people they, didn't stay in that school very long. No, they didn't. And they both met her at different times in the classic sitcom. Uh, Hey, I met a girl. So did I. Yeah. I can't wait for you to meet her. I can't wait for you to meet my girl. Yeah. And then, that's her. Who? Her? No, that's who I'm talking the about. The one behind my girl? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. And then it got down to a fight. And those two, and the writers wanted me to believe that Slater wouldn't beat the fucking yeah. brakes off Zach Moss. I always wanted to see it come to blows and just have Slater just turn him just, into a stain. Just dirty blood. Yeah. Yeah. All over yeah. Bayside. Yeah. Just be clumps of bleached hair. <laughs> this gross, yeah. shitty shirts from yeah. uh, Chess King. To quote One Crazy Summer, I would like to see him pummeled into something resembling a wet prune. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, would, I was now watching that. I'm going with Rude Dog. Uh, noon. All right. So, Noon, for me, cartoons are over. Uh, there's an outside chance I'd be checking out like a CBS story break if it okay. was something that caught my eye. Yeah. But more often than not. Dragon Flight. Yeah, but more often than not, uh, I was watching wrestling. Okay, fair enough. On, WWF? On Channel 25, yes, WWF on Channel 25 at noon, at noon o'clock. Noon at, o'clock? At noon o'clock. Tune in. At noon, it would be WWF Superstars. Yep. And then at 1 o'clock, it would be WWF Challenge. Yeah. And that's what I was watching. So here's what I'm going with. A show that I've mentioned weirdly many times on this podcast before, Animal Crackups. Okay. Animal Crack Ups was a show hosted by Alan Thicke. It was a it was almost like Jeopardy, with celebrities playing for charities. All the questions were about animals. Alan Thicke wrote and sang the theme song, which Shane Moss was very entertained by when I sang it on the show. Okay. Uh, and this particular episode, Larry Drake is in it, who you may know as Doctor Giggles. Oh, yeah. Mary Fran from Newhart. Charles Nelson Riley. And was it Larry Drake also in? Uh Dark Man? Yes, he's the yes. bad guy in Dark Man. Yes. Uh, Charles Nelson Riley and Brooke Thies, who uh, from Just the Ten of Us. This is the panel. I'm in. I'm loving Animal Crack Ups. There was a talking hedgehog. Great show. <laughs> Definitely watching it. No question about it. Uh, 11.30, there's a weekend special called The Horse That Played Center Field. <laughs> That we're missing. Also, Kissy Fur, probably the worst show. Terrible show. Ever. Wouldn't that be clumped in with all those shirt tails? Yeah, Kissy Fur was Kissy even worse. Fur. Kissy Fur was like Southern. Oh, it's the worst. But there's also a show on PBS called Owl TV, which was a Canadian show. It was a bit like 321 Contact, but more 80s than 70s. And it was different segments. One of the segments was about a kid whose best friend was a skeleton with eyes that lit up with light bulbs. It was a live action one. And this kid would talk to this skeleton. His name was like Mr. Bones or something. And he'd drive around with his bike and the skeleton on the back. And even as a kid, I was like, this would be an amazing art film yeah. about a mentally ill kid. It was on, it was on PBS? It was on PBS and Showtime used to air it as well. I believe it was Canadian. It was called Owl TV. So some of the segments would be about like animals, like National Geographic type, type stuff. It always had this Mr. Bones segment. Like, one time they went to the dentist together. And then the last segment was the Owl TV Kids. And they had a clubhouse, and they'd make something. So they'd make, like, a, you know, a car. And there was one in a wheelchair. And it was it was very... I, I was fascinated by the show. I always used to watch it. And I, and I don't really know why. Owl TV. I'll have to... Uh, had a good theme song. Look that up. Yeah. Uh, so then I would watch that. I definitely didn't watch wrestling because I would flip between Soul Train... Which I loved. I would, I would, I would uh, flip the Soul Train every once in a while. Soul Train, especially this time, pretty awesome. And uh, I remember there was a uh, when there was a group called the Boys. Yeah. And I remember he, one of the kids looked like a their, buddy of mine. Their song was something cousin. about kissing. That was their uh, their big. Uh, the Boys had uh, down my heart. Yeah. Down my heart. But call my baby yeah. on the phone. They were a very new addition. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And uh, one of my buddies cousin looked like one of the boys and we were like that's her 
cousin. Yeah. And he didn't deny it at first. Yeah. He's like, yeah. yeah. Why would you deny it? Right, right. But then we were like, that's not your cousin. After like a week. And he's like, yeah, yeah I know. It's not. It's but I was, not. I was loving the love that you guys. I tried to spread a rumor once that you were a former member of Perfect Gentleman. Oh, uh, they're from Boston. They are. That's yeah. If, and around our age. <laughs> so did anybody bite on that? No, no one bite. No one bite on it. No, yeah. He's not. He's not nailing those spin moves. I think he could do it. Um. Uh. Yeah. One of those guys went to school with my cousin. One of the people. One perfect of the gentlemen. Perfect gentleman guys. Yeah. They yeah. toured with New Kids on the Block. Yeah. They were big for about ten minutes. So yeah, I would just go between that. But and their song was Ooh La La. Ooh, Ooh La La. One of those weird songs with like an eleven year old being way too sexual. Yeah, it's like yeah. Hey, what do you guys? Baby, I just want to be in you. Here's it was a, like totally a weird thing. Uh, what was the group? High five. Yeah. Uh, I like the way. Yeah. So the, kissing game. Yeah, kissing yeah game. that's what I was thinking of for the boys. Yeah. So my aunt, this is like after, uh, like this is after like ninety five, right? My aunt had a cassette. Of high five, cause single, it, cause sing, Well, she had the whole the whole album, whole, the whole album. So she was the person. Yeah, and uh, well, you know what? <laughs> okay, they sold a lot of units they, in my yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, and um, she had, I think the CD or the CD, the tape came out in like 1990 yeah. or 91, and this is like it's like 95. She buy strawberries? Uh, probably, probably, probably on the second floor. They had, yep. where they had the DJ. Yep. And uh, they, a uh, kid friend of mine in high school actually worked up there for a while, for like two months and got fired. Nice. Um, Stealing stuff? Probably. Yeah. We didn't like that kid, though. Uh, she had the tape. So I said, hey, you have the high five tape. And I'm looking at it. And it was porn all in the middle of it. Yeah, porn <laughs> Uh It said, on one side, it said Oklahoma City. And the other side said Waco, Texas. What? And this was after Waco... And Oklahoma City violence. And I'm assuming that's where they're from. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's just weird. That is a little weird. Yeah. I think we need to do some investigation be some research the connection that. between High Five and the Oklahoma City bombing and the Branch Davidians. So if we go back and watch the footage, they'll say the Waco City bombing, you might see some yeah. guys in bright eight ball jackets what running from the scene. What is the kissing game exactly? What exactly? I think we found out. Play the kissing game backwards. And, and see what happens. Get burned down. Timothy McVeigh, former member. Former of High member, Five. original member. He was kicked out of High yep. Five. That's why he did. That's it. why he did it. <laughs> Never got over it. Never got over it. He nailed all the spin moves. Yeah, yeah. He invented the spin move. I remember there used to be a, a show in Boston here called Ready to Go. It was on. I remember that RTG. show. And the new kids on the block were on pretty much every day. And one episode, Jordan Knight was showing how to do dance moves that were quote of my own invention. And he showed the swatting flies and the, the grab your belt loops. It was fantastic, fantastic. Jordan Knight, love to have Jordan him on the show. Knight, my favorite Knight brother. So I was going to mention that it's the end of the day now. I would not watch WWF, but I would watch wrestling every Saturday. And what I would watch: the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, the Glow Girls, the Fox Twenty Five, the Glow Girls, Hollywood and Vine. Yep. Or my favorite tag team. And that actually did feature two or three women who were had. Uh, careers in pornography at the same time. I'm sure. Yeah. One of them, well, actually, they were on Myra Children once. Yeah. It was Big... Mount Fuji. Big Mount Fuji. Big Bad Mama. Big Bad Mama. Hollywood and Vine. And, oh, the worst acting. Oh, yeah. The, the worst rapping, acting. The, the show is awful. I have all every episode of Glow. I rewatched them frequently. It's so <laughs> wonderfully bad. It's like an hour-long 900 number commercial. Can I live here? I'm serious. If you want. I want to live here. I'll you stay can. in that cage. We got enough time. Yeah. I just I don't give a fuck. Like yeah. I want to be here. Yeah, you can. The double fine. stove. Like what is this place? Yeah, we, you, we get plenty of couches. This is the set from like Grown Pains or something like that. Oh, that's what I'm going for. Yeah, yeah. I've re- there's actually a really good book uh, called TV Sets, and an uh, uh, a uh, an architect went through all these TV shows, watched a ton of episodes, and then drew blueprint plans of the houses. So you can get blueprints of like the house from the Munsters and the Brady Bunch and the Seavers house. It's pretty cool. That I, yes, I need to find this book. It's a good book. It's on Amazon. You can get it for like a penny used. It's a cool book. It's called TV Sets. Yeah. Well, Mon Price, our Saturday's over. We have Saturday to go out, is done. Do something in the world. Return bottles or whatever we do. I'm probably going to run errands with my parents and then come back for syndicated Charles in Charge. Yeah, fair enough. Five o'clock. That's what I'd do. I'd go to the comic store. I would uh, go. There was a soda company in our in the next town over in Saugus that made their own soda called Red Rock Soda. 
uh, and uh, we would go with a wooden crate with glass bottles in it and return the ones from last week and get new sodas for the week. Pineapple soda was one. A one, one quick thing is uh, uh, speaking of like the ten thirty hour. Yeah. It was a fight between my brother and I and my mom because my mom would be in the living room. She'd be cleaning. Yeah. And we'd try to watch cartoons. Right. So she's got the vacuum going. But also, there was a station called WILD in okay. the 80s. It was a low-frequency AM station yep. for the urban area. Okay. And they just, in Saturday mornings, they had a show called The Time Tunnel. Okay. So it was all the songs from her, 60s. From her growing, 60s, 70s. Yeah. It was all that stuff, and she'd be cleaning, and she'd have it cranked. Yeah. And we'd be like, Ma, could we, we're trying to watch Ghostbusters. She's cranking her. And Thomas. she's cranking it. Yeah, she's, she's got Smokey Robinson yeah. going, and she's got the vacuum cleaner. Ah, oh. But you know what? I'd do it again. I'd yeah. do it again right now. Oh, absolutely. In a heartbeat. I'd do that, and I never did it before. That yeah. sounds fun. It's It was the best. Yeah. Well, Saturday mornings continue to be the best, and we'll bring them back. I wake up Saturday mornings today, and I always hope. For some reason, that there's going to be something that reminds me of being a kid. Yeah, there isn't. There can be. Uh, there should be. Yeah, uh, that's why I have t- t- thousands of hours of cartoons that I watch. I sometimes. will not leave here tonight. That's fine. That's fine. Before getting some more Saturday morning that's and other lovings of cartoon. That's fame. fine. I'll get the box out and you can take a look through. Yes. All right. Well, I'm on press. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> And there you go, Lamont Price, our returning guest Lamont Price, Saturday Special Edition. That was a fun episode. Make sure that you like us on Facebook if you don't already, if you've gotten this far into the show. I assume you like us enough to tell the Facebook community that you do. Please continue to email me at canandicanread.com. Let me know if you like these Special Edition shows, or if you have requests for other time frames other than prime time or Saturday morning that you would like to hear, years you'd like to hear, guests you'd like to hear on the show, I'll definitely try and hunt them down and get them on the show just for you. So tune in Wednesday. We'll have an all-new episode, and who knows when you'll get a special edition. Uh, You may be surprised, so make sure you like us on Facebook. Subscribe on iTunes. If you like the show, please share it with people. Rate and review the show. It's a huge help. I have zero budget for advertising. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you again Wednesday on TV Guidance Counselor. (laughs) 